Hello, Stephen here, and welcome back to Apache Nightbot. In this video, we're going to be covering a new processor called the Tel File Processor. And let's go ahead and grab that one and get started. So we'll go ahead and reach for it off of our tray there. And from here, we're going to type in Tel, and there it is. We see it in the list, Tel File. Now we see a little uh, shield icon here. So it's trying to tell us something. And uh, if we go back in there and we say Tel again, you can actually hover over it and see what that means. So it says, requires the following permissions. Read file system, provide operator, the ability to read from any file that NiFi has access to. Okay, so what this is gonna allow us to do is the same thing you do from a Linux command prompt, right? Or uh, from the console. You go ahead and do a tell, put the file name, voila, now you tell the file. So this processor allows us to do that and execute it against a file all the time. In order for that to work though, just like it says, the processor needs access or NiFi needs access to the directory that you wish to grab the log file from and tell, and also permissions to read it, the file itself. So if you have your NiFi set up on the local machine there where you're trying to get access to these files, you need to make sure that whatever user your NiFi instance is utilizing. So if you have a user called NiFi and NiFi utilizing that user, then you need to make sure that it has access to those files as well. So we're gonna go ahead and give this one a shot. Now we look at the descriptions here. It has a couple pieces of information. It's pretty nice to know. So it tells us in the description, tells a file or a list of files ingesting data from a file and it is as it is written to the file. The file is expected to be textual uh, data is ingested only when the new line is encountered, carriage return or new line character or combination. If the file to tell is periodic uh, rolled over, as, it, as is generally the case for log files, an optional rolling file name pattern can be used. And then down here, next over here, it tells us uh, it's advisable to change it from the standard to zero seconds for the scheduling of this processor to maybe adding a couple seconds in there. So it's it's allowing time for stuff to show up and it's just not overtaxing. Uh, you also have the option to look at additional details. When we do that, we're brought to this next page here. And in here, it tells us a little bit about how to utilize it in different modes. So there's a single file mode and multi -fi multiple files mode, mode. And from here, we can see examples of how to use it with rolling files. So you can use uh, the best example right here is you can put it in file patterns. So file name dot log dot all or star if you want. So if we take a look down here, if it's set up that way, we can see like here's the uh, file to tell. We're seeing a directory name and then a pattern and then the file name and then a pattern and then the dot log. So just some uh, more informational and ex uh, examples as well showing us how to use it if we want to use it in multiple files. Okay, we're not gonna be doing that. So let's go ahead and go back. And we have properties for this one. So we have a tell mode, which we just looked over, the single and multiple files. Uh, files to tell, uh, description of what is required, the rolling file name pattern. So if we have that pattern in there for multiple files or a rolling pattern, uh, the base directory, and it's used different, it's used for when you do your, it's required for when you're doing multiple file mode, the initial start pattern, the start location, recursive lookup, uh, set to true or false, and then the lookup frequency for multiple files, age information, and what to do when null is encountered. Uh, the relationship, there's just a success for this one. So there is no fail. And then it writes an attribute to the flow file it creates called the tellfile.original.path. So we know where it came from. And then that's really all we need to know here. So let's go ahead and close this and go look at this file or the processor. So we already know, we'll just leave the name alone. We're not gonna change anything in here. Scheduling, I want to run this every five seconds. Seems kind of reasonable uh, on all nodes. So uh, keep in mind, if I was running this on a cluster, I'd probably want to say primary node. Or in this case, <clears throat> because I'm gonna be pulling in the nifi-app.log, file, each server would have its own log file. So in this case, uh, if I was running a cluster and I wanted to grab those log files and tell them, 
then I'd probably say I would want all uh, instances to run this on a cluster so that they all bring in their individual logs and then I can add them to the flow and send them off to wherever I want, like a last search or something like that. All right, so under here, I also have properties. Now under properties, we need to set this up. So we are gonna do a single file. That's all we're gonna work with today. We need to provide a file to tell. So we need to go get that directory and look at the files that we wanna work with. So if we go, in this case, I'm running this NiFi instance in a Docker container. I'm gonna jump over to Portainer, make it easy to work with. I'm gonna, I just restarted this container. So now I can go ahead and go to the console for it. We're gonna log in as root. And then from here, if we do ls dash l, we can see the list of uh, folders we have in here in our directories. And then we can switch over to log. That's the one we're interested in. We can list in here. And we can see we have three logs right now. So we have nifi dash app dot log, bootstrap dot log, and users dot log. Really, I just care about the app dot log right now. And keep it in mind, if you're familiar with the logs directory, uh, NiFi will, once it gets to, so it uses the NiFi-app or dot .app .log. That's the primary one where the current information is. And then as it gets to either max size of log file, it generates a new log file, uh, renaming this one to dot one or whatever. I forgot what the exact pattern is. And then, but this one, the, this naming schema stays the same. So this is always gonna be the current file and then everyone else that's named after it uh, will be the archived versions of the file that were saved. Okay, so this is what we want, and this is our path, right? So we know it's an uh, OPT, NiFi, NiFi current logs. So that's where we want to tell the processor to go get the file. In this case, we'll be explicit in the file that we want to grab. So I'm done here. Go back over to NiFi, set up the file to tell. We'll put the path in there. I don't need to set a rolling file pa uh, name pattern in this case. I don't need a base directory because I'm not doing uh, multiple files. Initial start position, I'm gonna say at the beginning of file. So we also have a uh, beginning of time and the current time. So we don't have to go all the way to the beginning of file. If it's a really big file, we don't need all that stuff. Uh, but we'll do beginning of file in this case. Start location is gonna stay on the local. And then in here, we're gonna say false and recursive. I don't care about the lookup frequency because I'm not doing multiple files. Same thing with the age and same thing with the nulls. We'll leave that alone. So this should be able to get us some files. Let's go ahead and accept that one. And we need to do something with this. And that is what we're going to do. So let's go ahead and just throw it into another processor. Uh, I'm not sure what we wanna do with it yet. So let's just go log attribute. Which will be funny. We're going to take the log or the tell, push it over here. Okay, so now we should go ahead and be able to test this and see if it's going to work. So right click on it, say start. There we go. We got our first file. Refresh again. No changes yet. So go ahead and grab it. Remember, it was every five seconds, anyways. So grab two. Oh, someone just came in too. All right. So we want to look at that first one. Uh, and as we see, the file name gets a appended here are uh, added to the end of it. So we get little stamps here, letting us know the order of the files. And we can see from here, from zero to one, four, one, two, eight, zero, one, four, one, two, eight, zero, one, four, one, four, eight, four. So we can see that these are in order. So we go to the first one first, check that one out. All right, so since this was a new instance of NiFi that started up, we get everything from the beginning of time when NiFi launched. And we can see all the log information, right? And scroll down and see the NARs are being uh, extracted and loaded, or in this case, loaded. Uh, and scroll down a little more, see some extra information. This is all informational right now. And we'll just skip down below. I uh, would see we have a blatant sensitive property key was provided, so no encryption is set up right now in the properties file. Uh, we got some extra information here for more information. Go down the bottom and here we are. We're caught up to ourselves. We can see uh, the, the flow being saved, information on the checkpoint as well. So this is our NiFi log file. So it's working, right? We're getting the log. Uh, so that's pretty good. Now we can go ahead and close this. 
we'll look at the second one. And we see this one took the next instance of whatever is logged in there. So just stat, uh, just informational stuff on the flow service. And it's shown us that another save pending was false. So we'll leave this alone. And this is our log file. We can see we already have seven of them. They were running every five seconds based off the scheduling that we set up. So now we kind of need to be able to do something with this. And there's a lot of different options we have here, right? We could take this, we could push it into uh, directly into something if we wanted to, but honestly, when we look at it, right? So we go back and look at the file, take a look at it and look at its attributes. Uh, it is the file name here, the Mimi type, or my Mimi type is text plain. So whatever we're gonna do with it, we might need to change this. And like I said, this uh, processor creates a tail file dot original dot path, so we know where it came from, and then the original uh, the UUID for the slow file. So if I wanted to put this into say Elasticsearch, well, it expects JSON, right? If I wanted to send this off over to, oh, say Cassandra, well, Cassandra will take a CSV format or a text format. It also takes JSON and it will take Avro, uh, but we would need to clean this and parse it up a little bit so that it would know what to do with it and we couldn't put it directly into a database because it would just be one one record or one row would be one column right now so it needs we need to do something with it so the best thing to do would probably be to parse it out so what we're gonna do is stop this and when we come in the next video we'll go ahead and go over one method for uh, parsing this out and the one we're going to look at is going to be a grok so extract grok We'll learn how we can use this and incorporate it into here to parse using a pattern, a grok pattern, and prepare that so that we can send it off to say uh, Elasticsearch or any other uh, platform that we want that accepts say JSON. So we'll go ahead and do that next. But uh, this is how you use the tell file. This can be useful for if I had a Minify set up on a local remote machine and I wanted it to just run Minify there. I could set up a quick little flow where it's capturing data from another application or something that is creating, generating log files. And I want to generate the, or capture those log files, package them off and send them over to my main NiFi instance from the, that remote one from a Minify flow. I could do that. Uh, you can also just capture on a local machine, but uh, Minify would probably be the most reasonable way to use it as it allows you to capture that data off a remote machine and basically package it up and send it off over to your main machine. All right, hope you enjoyed the video. Catch you in the next one.